We interrupt your program to bring you breaking news. Xenon is cancelled. The future is Krypton. And you need to hire the Krypton lady, Leanne Sue, now. For some background to our story tonight. Hall thrusters. We all know them. We love them. They're state-of-the-art from 1 to 5 kilowatts. They have plenty of heritage and high efficiencies. Recent work has been trying to take them to higher powers, over 100 kilowatts, to enable deep space mission. And this has partially been made possible by magnetic shielding, which reduces ring erosion and improves lifetimes of these devices. But we have a problem on our hands. And that problem is that with these higher powers are higher mass flows. And the prices of xenon are out of control, with a single liter costing as much, if not more, than $200. So let's consider Krypton. Krypton is about 10 times cheaper than Xenon, and by switching from Xenon to Krypton, you could save enough money to buy yourself an entire new grad student. So why isn't everyone already using Krypton? For more on this, we go to our field reporter, Leanne Su, to tell us what's wrong with Krypton. Thank you, Leanne Su. Our research primarily has been with the H9, a 9 kilowatt class magnetically shielded hull thruster. And what we found as, is that the efficiency of Krypton on this device, this magnetically shielded thruster, is 9 to 18% worse than that of Xenon. This is primarily attributed to the fact that Krypton's mass utilization is fairly poor. It has a higher ionization energy, so it's harder to ionize it, as you can tell from this conversation between an electron and neutrals. So one big distinction between shielded and unshielded thrusters is that with unshielded thrusters, we see the efficiency gap between xenon and krypton close at high voltages. But with our shielded thruster, the H9, we actually saw this efficiency gap widen at high voltages, as you can see from our plot here. So why is krypton's performance worse, and why have the high voltages betrayed us? For more on this, we turn to our investigative journalist, Leanne Su. Thank you, Leanne Su. Now, as you know, I spent the last four years of my life on this investigation. And what we've done is we've used an innovative combination of experiment and simulation to gain deeper insight into internal plasma properties. We've done this by using a variety of diagnostics in the chamber with our hall thruster, including a thrust stand, various probes, and laser-induced fluorescence. We then can use this data to calibrate our simulations and therefore gain deeper insight into, the, uh, into what's actually happening in the channels of these hull thrusters. And what we found is that xenon has a larger increase in ion production when going from low to high voltages when compared to krypton on these shielded devices. We believe this is due to the higher electron temperatures seen on shielded thrusters compared to unshielded, as well as the larger increase that we see in electron densities for, for xenon compared to krypton. And as you can see from this conversation here between an electron that is hotter because it's at a higher discharge voltage with some neutrals, once again, krypton just isn't cooperating. We can also see that with our experimental and simulated data, we can characterize things like the change in acceleration region between different conditions. So with all this information, how can we actually improve Krypton operation on shielded thrusters? For more on this, we go to our weather person, Leanne Su. Thanks, Leanne. The forecast is bright and purple. So what do we actually need to do to improve the performance of these things? We have to increase the electron temperatures and the electron densities of Krypton. And we can do this by exploring high current densities. As you can see from the data presented by my coworker, field reporter Leanne Su, the smallest efficiency gap is at the 20 amp condition, signified by these little triangles, where we see only 9% difference between the efficiencies of xenon and krypton. Another thing that's interesting about uh, shielded thrusters is that we can use conducting wall materials, which means we can use materials with better thermal dissipation. This lets us get to higher currents and lets us explore this high current density regime even further than we have been able to in the past. And so by focusing on improving mass and current utilization, we can safely say that the forecast for the future is more Krypton. Back to you, Leanne Su. Thank you, Leanne. Always nice to hear about some good weather coming our way. We'd like to thank you all for tuning in for this broadcast. This message has been approved by, ele by Electrons and by Leanne the Krypton Lady and by Money as a concept. Thank you. This is Leanne Sue signing off.